Welcome to Classic Value Investors and Microcap Explosions. This is Mariusz Skonieczny. Today I'm talking about an article that just came out when I woke up, so it kind of made me angry. So just FYI, I might get really pissed off while talking because it really annoys me. So you might hear some swearing, some yelling. If you don't like it, just turn off this video. But anyway, it's this article that was on Business Insider or something like this, and I put it into my word so that I can highlight some of the things. And I'm going to talk about it and some of the fucking ridiculousness that the, the financial media is trying to push onto retail investors. And the title of the article is Reddit that day traders wanted to beat Wall Street to prove the system is rigged. Instead, they did it by losing. And this article is talking about the GameStop saga. Okay, And I, I talked about GameStop on this channel. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over some of the things that I highlighted in, in this article and kind of give you my insight I, on what I think about some of the stupid nonsense that is said here. Okay, Keith Gill, the day trader and member of Reddit group Wall Street Bets, who's widely credited with igniting the recent GameStop trading frenzy, claimed in late January that he had turned his $54,000 investment into a $48 million fortune. And of course, this is before, you know, it got cut in half and I don't know where, you know, where he stands. But this is an example of, okay, so you have stupid craziness in GameStop because a bunch of people think that they're just going to bid it up, as they say, to the moon and it's going to be, it turned out very well. It's going to turn out very well for the people like him who are benefiting from the Ponzi scheme, okay? Or a zero sum game, because this is nothing but a Ponzi scheme. Um, he bought in without even knowing that this was going to happen, and then the stock went up like crazy because a bunch of fools got together and decided to bid up um, the stock of a, you know, worth, not worthless, but a shitty company uh, to 10 or 50 times more than it's worth. So. He and along other people who got in early made a lot of money at an expense of someone else, which is the next paragraph. Many retail investors have fared five wars, uh, far worse. One Robin Hood user lost $70,000 in savings. Congratulations for being a fucking idiot and contemplated committing suicide. Uh, another Alexander Kearns did. So here you go. This is this is a consequence of you know the people who are on the losing side of this okay uh, the media and the social media hyped it some un, un, not sophisticated investors got in lost their savings impacted their life and while the smart players like hedge funds who you know played it as a momentum play ended up on top at the expense of the less educated ones. And here's the proof. Before the roller co coaster went off the rails, however, one hedge fund walked away with a, a $70 million profit. Yeah, yeah, they played it right. They bought in before the craziness. They knew it was stupid. So they came in, uh, unloaded uh, their position on people who don't know any better. And I know there was, I don't know if they're talking about this one, but I know there was uh, insiders unloaded their shares to retailers. I know there was debt that was converted into shares and unloaded into uneducated retail investors who bought into the, it's going to the moon. And when I made a video about it, someone made a comment saying that, oh, we were heard. And I said, yes, you were heard. But whether you said something uh, intelligent or not, that's another story. It had made a compelling narrative to an army of retail investors without deep pockets, sophisticated trading algorithms, proprietary market data, or other tools of the trade, bending together to beat powerful, corrupt financial institutions at their own game. Ultimately, Wall Street and other big money investors 
still appear to have ended up on top. Of course, no surprise here because these guys that are behind these hedge funds and, and Wall Street firms, they actually understand the game. So, you know, the, the, the handful of players that were short, that got hurt, there's a lot more that made money through it at the expense of the retail investors. So instead of retail investors um, winning some kind of battle here, they lost, they lost it to the big, the big hedge funds that they are uh, claiming to be fighting against. They said there's a lot of work to be done to make the markets work for small investors again. And that sentence pisses me off. And then the next one too, geared to favor the big. The whole business is basically a power dynamic. It's geared to favor the big over the small. This is the biggest bullshit that there is. Retail investors have a huge advantage over the big hedge funds, huge advantage, because they can go into places where the big hedge funds cannot go to. If you look at the returns of the Wall Street firms and hedge funds, they are shitty. You know why they are shitty? Because they are fishing from the same pond, okay? Now, without bragging, I'm, a, I'm an individual, right? I don't run a hedge fund. Now, in, in about 11 years, uh, my investment return now is about 400x. 400x, okay? And now, it was 100x in 2019. Then it was dropped really bad to like 30x. And, not, and then I took advantage of this COVID situation by buying a lot of fantastic small companies. And now I am about 400x. Now, if it wasn't for my stupid decision to invest in the miners between 2012 and 2017, I think my, my, my return would have been 1,000x. So I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this because small investors have a huge advantage over hedge funds because we can go into places where they cannot go. We can go into places with little liquidity because they want liquidity because they constantly need to trade. We can go into small companies that they can't go to because they have too much money. We can go on exchanges that they cannot go to because the, the regulation or the rules stop them from going there. So seeing stupid stuff like that, that the market is geared towards the big players it is not. It is, yes, it is geared towards the big players if you, as a small player, want to fish from the same pond. If you want to do exactly what they do, then you will not win. And what do these hedge funds and these big players want? They want quick money. They want returns every week, every month, every hour. If you have this kind of mindset, no, you will not win with them because they have better technology, better access to markets. They will front run you, high frequency trading. No, you're not going to win it. So don't play the game that you cannot win. Instead, choose the game that you can win multiple times over them when they cannot even participate. But most people don't want to do this. They want to go into places where there's a lot of competition, a lot of hype, and they want to win there. It's everywhere in life. If you look at, for example, things like sports, or, or let's just say, you know, in the United States, what do kids do, right? They waste their time playing, and I'm not saying sports are bad because I'm a big sports guy, but if you talk to the parents, they, they send them to do the same things as everybody else is doing, playing football, uh, uh, basketball, doing this. Now, so they put all this activity into these, um, into these areas and, you know, they benefit them. But I, as you know, I'm into ballroom dancing. And so many times I try to convince parents to have their kids go into dancing. How do you think that goes? And now when, when they become football players or bas basketball players, uh, thinking that they can make it to to the NBA or or play into college, most of them don't. So most of the resources are wasted on activities that don't yield them anything because there's so much competition. And and then in this country where I live, we actually have to bring people from Europe uh, for for dancing to because there's not enough of um, Americans that dance. 
and those people that are brought from Europe from other countries into US make huge money because kids and 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 people in the United States don't want to do it so it's an example of how very little competition can yield huge returns and I see this all over the place people want to be in the markets where there's so much competition and they have so little edge and they refuse refuse to go into places where they can have an edge and make huge amounts of money is the market really fair for individual investors is it really competitive what we are seeing is that it is not it is not fair yeah it is not fair if you again go into the places where everybody else is going it is not fair it's like cutting grass with scissors when everybody else has a and you know powerful lawnmower okay go into something else Wall Street edge over retail investors remains as usual structural complete bullshit retail investors have a huge edge over Wall Street investors the house will still wins bullshit rather than gambling on the dubious promise of more Americans gaining access to the casino it's time to rewrite the rules to ensure that the house doesn't always win no it's not time to rewrite the rules it's time to educate people about investing instead of treating it as a casino in educate them about what this whole game is about part of Americans frustration with the current financial system is that it has become so complex that only Wall Street insiders really seem to know how everything works okay let's talk about this a little bit okay now the financial game seems very complicated now but it's not okay you don't have to know how every financial instrument works okay in my career I have never shorted a stock I have never bought an option never okay I don't trade what I do is I buy interest in businesses I don't study about how the market works I study businesses now the financial market serves only one purpose for me is to buy an interest in a company that's it that's why I go there I have a brokerage account I buy an interest in the company that I have you know positive view about in the future and then when I sell it I sell an interest in the company that's it I focus on the business I don't focus on doing astrology circles and lines and triangles and technical analysis all of that is completely useless to me I study the business I focus on the business I focus on the products I call the clients to see if they like the product I call the competitors to see how the things uh, compare to each other I talk to the management I focus on the business I don't focus on the markets okay so we need to if, if you want more in quality educate educate people about businesses and what the financial what the stock market is for the stock market is a market where you go and you buy businesses and you sell businesses that's it everything else on top options and all this crazy stuff is just to make people trade and risk and and just keep them confused for the end Elon Musk for example has spent the past few weeks hyping up cryptocurrencies lot like Dutch coin I mean that one is good I just saw an article about um, the, the the founder or, or the creator of Dutch coin right so he spends three hours creating this piece of shit and now people are piling into it like it's the next you know Amazon okay that's what they're that's that that's what they're fo focusing on and worthless pieces of shit instead of focusing on looking at places where the odds are in their favor okay looking at businesses that are fantastic coming up with great products growing selling at cheap prices no why would you want to do that if you can buy a piece of shit Dutch coin that that Elon Musk is pumping so anyway that's it for this rant thanks for watching have a good day